Welcome to another video on our channel. In this video, we will be exploring Yellowstone National Park, one of the oldest and most well-known parks in the USA. Yellowstone National Park is a spectacular destination for nature enthusiasts, adventure seekers, and families alike. However, amidst the natural beauty lies a hidden danger that has claimed the lives of over 300 people and injured countless others. Even small children have fallen from boardwalks or wandered into dangerous areas, requiring rescue from park rangers. Please be advised that some of the content in this video may be graphic or disturbing, and viewer discretion is advised. Yellowstone National Park, established in 1872, is a breathtaking natural wonder and holds the distinction of being the world's first and oldest national park. Located primarily in the U.S. state of Wyoming, the park stretches into Montana and Idaho. It covers an area of almost 3,500 square miles and is famous for its incredible geysers, abundance of wildlife, and natural beauty. Yellowstone's unique geological features are a result of the park's location above a hotspot in the Earth's mantle. The heat generated by this hotspot causes the land to bulge and crack, creating a variety of geological features such as fumaroles, mud pots, and geysers. One of the most famous of these features is Old Faithful, a geyser that erupts on a predictable schedule, drawing thousands of visitors each year. Another notable feature is the Yellowstone Caldera, a massive volcanic crater that was formed by a catastrophic eruption over 600,000 years ago. The caldera is still active and contains a supervolcano that could potentially cause catastrophic damage if it were to erupt. However, experts believe that the likelihood of this happening anytime soon is extremely remote. Despite the potential threat of the supervolcano, the more immediate danger for visitors to Yellowstone is the park's hot springs. The hot springs in the park are warmed by the geothermal activity and range from lukewarm pools to seething cauldrons of steam and boiling water. Most of the hot springs are warmer than a very hot bath, with some almost boiling. Since 1870, 22 individuals have perished in the hot springs of the park, having inadvertently fallen in Venturing off the designated boardwalks in wilderness areas like Mammoth Hot Springs can lead to life-threatening situations. The park's brittle ground can easily give way, causing hikers to sink into boiling hot groundwater that can reach temperatures of 250 degrees Fahrenheit or 121 degrees Celsius. This can result in third-degree burns and even death. On August 24, 1926, a tragic incident occurred involving Pastor Gilbert Aikens while he was taking a walk with his family near the West Thumb area of the park at approximately 8 p.m. Unfortunately, Aikens slipped and fell into one of the pools. In his attempt to extricate himself from the boiling water, which had only burned the lower half of his body, he inadvertently fell into another hot pool before falling back into the first one headfirst. Ranger Wendell Keat, a doctor who happened to be at the nearby road crew bunkhouse, heard the screams and cries for help and immediately ran to the geyser basin with the help of Mr. Halstead, a government truck driver. He recalled, Upon my arrival at the scene, I witnessed a man stumbling through the trees, screaming for help as he approached the road. He claimed to have fallen into a pool and suffered burns all over his body. I instructed Mr. Halstead, who was holding him, to be gentle while I took hold of the man. I requested Halstead's knife, then carefully laid the man on his back and began cutting away his clothing. Even in the dim light, it was clear that large areas of skin on his body and limbs had been stripped away. Within two minutes, a large crowd had gathered, including all the employees of the road camp and the camping company. Ranger Wendell Keats said, 
As I continued to remove the man's clothing, I asked for a comforter to avoid introducing foreign materials into the burned areas. My wife arrived with the car and Ranger Miller arrived with my medicine kit. After removing all the man's clothing, I administered one half grain of morphine to ease his extreme pain. Mrs. Evans from the road camp provided three pints of olive oil, which I used to cover the man's entire body. I then obtained two clean sheets from the camping company, which I used to wrap Mr. Aikens so that his trunk and extremities were completely covered. I soaked the sheets in oil before using them to wrap him. I gave mineral oil orally to help relieve the burning in the esophagus and trachea, which were damaged when the victim had ingested hot water. Unfortunately, the fact that Mr. Aikens' head was submerged increased the likelihood of his death as his internal burns were almost as severe as his external ones due to the ingestion of hot water. One of the most terrifying aspects of falling into a hot spring is the realization that one may remain fully conscious for numerous agonizing hours while waiting for the inevitable end. In the wake of this tragic event, Patty Aikens made a valiant effort to seek redress from the government through congressional action. She strongly argued that compensation was warranted for the tragic accident and pointed out that the specific hot spring pool in question was located near a heavily frequented public walkway. She believed that some sort of railing or rope should have been erected around the pool to prevent any future accidents. However, her attempts were apparently unsuccessful. Sadly, the Reverend Aikens would not be the last person to suffer from this dreadful and traumatic experience. On June 28, 1970, while on vacation with his family, Andy Hecht, who was nine years old at the time, was walking along a boardwalk in Yellowstone towards one of the park's 10,000 thermal pools, which emit near boiling water. A gust of wind blew steam rising from the pool into his eyes briefly blinding him. He missed a turn in the walkway, which lacked a guardrail, and fell into the pool where the temperature was 200 degrees Fahrenheit, or 93 degrees Celsius. Despite swimming a few strokes, he was scalded to death and sank before the eyes of his mother, father, sister, and brother. At around 4 a.m. the following morning, Andy's father was unable to sleep in his motel room, even with heavy sedation. He got out of bed and with his wife's assistance, wrote a two-page letter to Walter J. Hickel, the Secretary of the Interior, whose department oversees the National Park Service. He wrote, I am writing to you in an effort to give a little more meaning to Andy's life. We believe that his tragic death was caused by inadequate safety precautions on the part of the Park Service. He implored Mr. Hickel to take positive action to prevent similar accidents from occurring in the future. The tragic death of Andy Hecht highlights the weaknesses of the Park Service's safety approach. The Hecht family arrived in Yellowstone without receiving any maps, information, or warnings. Although they spoke with a ranger at Old Faithful, they were not warned of the boiling water that often lies just beneath thin mineral crusts. As a result of the letter sent to Mr. Hickel, Congress more than doubled funding for the Park Service's safety program. Funding went towards hiring new safety officers in major parks and regional offices. Crews in Yellowstone also rerouted the boardwalk around Crested Pool and added a railing to prevent future falls. They also added more warning signs. The Hex filed a $1 million lawsuit against the government and the Park Service, but eventually settled out of court for $20,000. They used the money to start a foundation named after their son, which sponsored a safety award for Park Service employees. The Hex visited every Park Service director since Andy's death to discuss safety and their hope for some kind of memorial to their son in Yellowstone. It was not until Roger Kennedy became Park Service director that officials proposed updated signs warning of the dangers at the Geyser Basin with a short mention of Andy's death. 
It has been a decade since someone died due to burns in Yellowstone, and that was in an undeveloped, backcountry geyser basin. On July 20, 1981, a 24-year-old man named David Allen Kerwin was driving through Yellowstone with his friend, Ronald Ratliff, and Ronald's dog, Moosey, in an area known as the Fountain Paint Pot Thermal Area. This region features a series of brightly colored blue, green, and orange hot springs ranging in temperature from hot to boiling. As they parked in one of the visitor areas to explore the hot springs, Moosey leapt out of the truck and ran straight towards one of the pools, the Celestine Pool. However, Moosey immediately began to yelp in agony after leaping in, as it had been measured to be only a few degrees shy of boiling. David and Ronald rushed to the edge of the pool upon hearing Moosey's cries and called out to him, but in his panic, Moosey couldn't swim towards them. Seeing this, David decided to take action and jumped into the water after him, determined not to let Moosey die. Other park visitors attempted to dissuade him from jumping in due to the water's extreme temperature, but David remained resolute in his attempt to save the dog. He brushed off the warnings, took two steps back, and then dove headfirst into the boiling water. David swam towards Moosey through the near boiling water and managed to grab him before swimming back to the shore. However, before he could make it all the way, he slipped underwater and had to let go of Moosey to swim back alone. When he reached the edge of the pool, he was already so weakened that he could hardly pull himself out, requiring Ronald's assistance. In that brief moment of help, Ronald suffered second-degree burns from pulling David out of the water. Eyewitnesses who saw the rescue attempt noted that he was severely burned all over his body and appeared to have gone blind as he was pulled out of the pool. Kerwin's physical state was undoubtedly distressing to behold. His eyes lacked their natural pigmentation and were instead a pallid white, rendering him unable to see. Furthermore, his hair had begun to fall out in clumps, adding to his already alarming appearance. An incident occurred when a park visitor attempted to assist him by removing one of his shoes, and to their horror, Kerwin's skin, which had already begun to flake off in various areas of his body, came off with it. He uttered, That was stupid. How bad am I? That was a stupid thing I did. Despite his efforts to save the dog, it tragically perished just moments after Kerwin escaped the scalding water. Despite being rushed to Salt Lake City Hospital, David passed away the following day from his injuries. David acted rashly, and his decision ultimately cost him his life. These kinds of incidents are unfortunately not uncommon in Yellowstone National Park where dogs are not allowed in many areas due to the danger posed by the park's thermal features. Despite these regulations, there have been instances of violations where park rangers encountered visitors who brought their dogs into restricted areas or allowed them to roam free without a leash. These violations have resulted in cases where owners sustained serious burns trying to rescue their dogs. Every year, a group of college students is employed for summer jobs in the park. These students are provided with accommodation and have the opportunity to experience an unforgettable summer of hiking, working, and bonding with their colleagues. On August 21, 2000, a group of these summer employees decided to go for a swim in the Firehole River near Mount Geezer. What started as an afternoon dip turned into an evening spent in and around the water and by the time the group decided to head back to the nearby car park, night had fallen. Unfortunately, they had stayed out longer than planned and nobody in the group had a flashlight. Nevertheless, they were relatively confident in their ability to navigate safely. In high spirits after a day spent together, they made their way homeward. Three of them lagged behind, walking hand in hand through the dark. At one point, they came across what looked like a narrow stream in the low light, something which they believed they could easily jump over. However, 
they were horrifyingly wrong. They had, in fact, stumbled upon a pit of boiling water which only looked narrow because of overhanging ledges of dirt on either side. Unaware of the danger, the three jumped across together and landed on the dirt ledge on the far side, which instantly gave way. Together, they plunged down into the hot spring below. Hearing the screams of the three who had fallen, others from the group rushed back and pulled them out as quickly as they could. Despite this, all three suffered major burns over most of their bodies. Two of them would survive with expert medical care, but one would not. Sarah Holfers, just 20 years old and the shortest in the group, had been the most thoroughly immersed in the scalding water. Holfers died as a result of complications arising from very severe burns. The other two companions survived, but with severe burns all over their bodies, according to park officials. They were hospitalized in Salt Lake City for several months to recover. Hundreds attended Sarah's funeral. She had been loved by all who knew her and had been immensely happy working in Yellowstone that summer. Her loss was deeply felt by both her colleagues and those from her home state of Washington. According to Cheryl Matthews, the park's spokesperson, Holfers and two companions were returning from a swim in the Firehole River when their friends heard their cries between 10 p.m. and 11 p.m. on Monday. They fell into Cavern Spring, which is a 178-degree pool about 10 feet deep. Marsha Carl, another spokesperson for the park, explained that the three were trying to navigate the geyser basin after sunset and before the moon rose. Rangers spoke with park concession employees and determined that alcohol was likely not a factor in the accident. Yellowstone's hot springs are often surrounded by thin, fragile crusts, and numerous warning signs are posted. Visitors to the lower geyser basin are urged to stay on a boardwalk over the treacherous terrain. Carla Wilson, who was visiting Yellowstone with her mother, expressed her disbelief at the accident and advised against venturing off the boardwalk, stating, You couldn't pay me enough to set foot off this. Matthews stated that some of the friends stayed with Holfers while others helped Montague and Butchie walk to their cars, located about a quarter of a mile away. It's pretty remarkable that they walked these two young men out, which took some time because they were pretty hurt, she said. On June 7, 2016, Colin Scott, a 23-year-old college graduate from Portland, Oregon, was in the park to visit his sister Sable and to illegally swim in a restricted area. Despite numerous prominent warning signs in the area instructing people to stay on the boardwalk, the two decided to venture off, with Sable filming a video of their deliberate disobedience. Scott's decision to leave the boardwalk was just one of several fatal errors. He walked 225 yards on fragile ground in flip-flops, then kneeled down to examine the temperature of the Norris Geyser Spring, where water temperatures typically reach 93 degrees Celsius, or 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Suddenly, he slipped and fell into it. His sister Sable was unable to rescue him and suffered minor injuries herself. Unfortunately, there was no mobile phone service at the basin, so Sable had to retreat to the nearby ranger museum to seek assistance. When officials arrived at the spring, they found remains of Colin's head, upper torso, and hands. However, they were unable to recover the remains due to the spring's temperature and the forecast of a lightning storm. The following morning, officials returned to the site, but by then, the acidic pool had completely dissolved Colin's body, leaving only a few personal belongings like his wallet and flip-flops. Colin was a recent graduate of Pacific University and was highly regarded as a top student and a wonderful person. His family described him as a dedicated Christian whose love for people stemmed from his love for God. 
This tragic incident serves as a reminder of the importance of adhering to safety measures and warning signs in Yellowstone National Park, where more than 20 people have died from interactions with thermal zones since the 1800s. Although officials never released the video to the public, it remains on police file as a testament to the dangers of this natural wonder. Scott was the 22nd victim on record, but unfortunately, he wasn't the last. Last summer, a dismembered foot inside a black shoe floated to the surface of the Abyss Pool at the West Thumb Geyser Basin in Yellowstone National Park. It was later determined to belong to Ilhan Rowe, a 70-year-old male from Los Angeles, California. In addition to the bone found protruding from the shoe, investigators also examined certain fatty tissues that were observed on the surface of the pool. It remains unclear if these tissues were connected to Rowe's body. Authorities have ruled out foul play, and no suicide note was discovered, but they are still unable to piece together the circumstances surrounding Hill's death. It was discovered that Ill stayed at the Grand Canyon of Yellowstone, about an hour's drive away from where his foot was eventually found, and his Kia Nero was eventually the only visitor's car left parked near the Abyss Pool. However, investigators are still unsure whether he traveled alone. Photo album, notebooks, and a book of poems with handwritten notes were found inside his car. The language used in the poetry and notes was not English, and the contents have been redacted from the recently released report. It is also unclear what language they were written in. Although investigators used Google Translate, they found nothing that could be interpreted as a suicide note. After the discovery, the West Thumb Geyser Basin was temporarily closed to visitors, and park officials warned the public to stay on boardwalks and trails in thermal areas. They were also advised to exercise extreme caution around thermal features. These are only a few examples of deaths caused by hot springs that have been documented throughout Yellowstone's extensive history. Countless others include cases of people wandering off of designated paths, accidentally falling into potholes, or mistakenly diving into the water they believed to be lukewarm, only to discover it was boiling hot. To ensure visitor safety at Yellowstone National Park, the National Park Service has implemented several measures to minimize the risk of accidents in thermal areas, particularly around the boiling geysers. One of the most important safety measures is the use of boardwalks and trails, which guide visitors through thermal areas with the help of sturdy paths that can withstand the heat and pressure of the geysers. These boardwalks are designed to keep visitors at a safe distance from the thermal geysers. Warning signs and barriers have also been installed around dangerous thermal features, including the boiling geysers, to clearly indicate where visitors should not go and explain the risks associated with approaching too closely. We hope that this video has provided you with valuable information about the tragic accidents that have taken place in Yellowstone National Park. While this park is a stunning and remarkable place to visit, it's also important to be aware of potential dangers and hazards. By following safety guidelines, respecting warning signs, and staying on designated trails and boardwalks, Visitors can help prevent accidents and stay safe while enjoying the park's natural wonders. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more content like this. If you have any comments, we'd love to hear from you in the comments section below. And as always, stay safe and take care.